Hey everyone, in this video today, we're gonna to go over the supply chain analyst role. We're gonna go over the skills required to perform this role, how you can become one yourself, and the different kind of interview questions you might get asked. All right, what does a supply chain analyst do? If you can't tell from the name already, a supply chain analyst mainly focuses on analyzing data regarding the supply chain. What that actually means though, is that they do a lot of stuff around businesses that focus on having and holding inventory or specifically around logistics, uh, such as trucking or even food delivery. Because when you're selling inventory online and specifically with the rise of D2C businesses today, a lot of the issues are around inventory management that pop up. This means analyzing historical sales data, understanding how much inventory to hold at any given time, and figuring out the throughput for different kinds of products. Let's take a real life example. Let's say you work as a supply chain analyst for a global e-commerce company that sells shoes. One day you notice customers keep on complaining about one brand of shoes that keeps on selling out. Your job as a supply chain analyst would be to diagnose the problem and figure out what's causing there always to be an inventory shortage for this particular brand of shoes. For example, is it that our inventory forecasting model is always under ordering shoes from our main supplier, potentially in China, or Vietnam? Is it the fact that the supplier itself is dealing with delays with actually fulfilling those orders? Or do we actually have the inventory ourselves, but it's getting lost in the warehouse, being misplaced, or being branded with some other SKU or product? Your job as a supply chain analyst would be able to figure out exactly what the problem is and then try to coordinate with other team members to actually diagnose the problem and create a solution for it. That being said, a lot of what the supply chain analyst does is to actually solve these problems on a continual basis. So if you're seeing a lot of these problems again and again, we see the supply chain analysts actually building out dashboards and creating out actually inventory health management tools for different kinds of team members or executives to be able to monitor those in real time. So a lot of it is also about building tools to make sure that the actual business functions correctly for anything that occurs on the data side. Now, I've talked a lot about the inventory management part of it, but there's actually a lot of other common scenarios that the supply chain analysts actually work with. For example, one common issue is around supplier performance evaluation. If you're a huge brand, let's say Nike, right? And you're dealing with multiple suppliers, maybe hundreds or thousands, you're actually continuously evaluating their performance on the basis of if they can actually meet your needs and if you're having a good partnership over the long term. So a lot of the analysis comes around cost efficiency across different suppliers and figuring out if their performance is on track as well. Then there's also the transportation and logistics part. So if you're a supply chain analyst specifically that owns their own fleet of trucks, maybe you even manufacture the product as well, then you're dealing with different kinds of logistical problems, such as analyzing different kinds of transportation routes and then understanding throughput of your actual manufacturing. The last thing that supply chain analysts focus on is reducing costs. A lot of that comes from inventory that sits on the shelf, making sure that it doesn't stay on there for a really long time to actually operationalizing and figuring out how we can improve the machines that are making the product so that they don't break down all the time. So the role of the supply chain analyst is actually super important. Now let's talk about how you can actually become a supply chain analyst. Now generally because it is an analyst title field, it's gonna be more of an entry to mid-level role. Specifically for the supply chain analyst, companies with good new grad programs can hire this role right out of college. Most of the time though, they probably want someone with one to two years of experience but again, that's gonna come with a higher premium and you're gonna command a higher salary that way. So you can expect that the bigger companies and the companies with more established players in the field like Intel for a semiconductor supply chain, or let's say Nike for selling shoes and e-commerce, they're gonna be ones that wanna hire more experienced supply chain analysts and also potentially have new grad programs because they're big companies to hire them straight out of college. Therefore, if you're interviewing for more of a startup, they're probably going to exclusively focus more on hiring individuals with experience already because they don't have the actual benefit of being able to hire people right out of school and train them up in a short amount of time. So the best way to actually get this kind of role is to first get a bachelor's degree in college, probably in a specific kind of engineering path or operations path. So you could do something in business, uh, potentially economics also, if you're gonna go down the engineering path, and industrial engineering is a really big, and probably the most popular degree for supply chain analysts. Then it's really important just to get real world experience. So if you're actually targeting internships or companies to get experience, focus on companies like Nike, Intel, uh, specifically anything where they actually do a lot of manufacturing. And this is more of an old school kind of company approach, I would say. You're gonna get a lot of older school companies, I would say, because manufacturing was really big 
you know, obviously in the early 1900s. But again, semiconductors are probably the biggest, hottest field right now. And that's really where a lot of your effort is going to be focused when you're targeting companies and industries. Now, essential skills that we have to talk about here for supply chain analysts. In general, as I said before, because a lot of these companies are going to be a little bit older, probably more established, you're looking at just having experience with, you know, Microsoft Office Suite, as well as a consistent or big ERP system like SAP. ERP system stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. It's generally used for doing a lot of inventory management as well as account payables and other stuff like that. Then we're talking about more technical stuff like Excel, Tableau, SQL. These are kind of the standard big dashboarding plus data management tools that most of these companies will use. If you're a more experienced supply chain analyst, you're going to be using SQL more, but typically a lot of the older companies will probably do a lot of their analysis in Excel or potentially R. So really the tools are all different, but at the end of the day, once you have the skill set for one, you can learn the other pretty easily. All right, let's look at some example interview questions that might show up on your supply chain analyst interview. The typical behavioral questions are pretty standard. I think a lot of these are, around, are gonna be around projects and specifically how you worked on different kinds of industries in the past. For example, you might get asked something like, describe a challenging supply chain project you worked on, what was the outcome, and what did you learn from it? Or tell me about a time when a supplier failed to deliver on time. How do you manage the situation? A lot of these are going to be behavioral interview questions, and you can apply the STAR framework and practice here. If you want to learn more about the STAR framework, check out the video that we've done on behavioral interview questions below. Now, if we're talking about technical interview questions, there's kind of two types of technical interview questions for the supply chain analyst roles. One is going to be focused more on SQL and probably more data analysis. So this is going to be the more pure coding aspect. And you might receive this or you might not on the interview. It just really depends on the company itself and what kind of technical role they're expecting for you. Here's an example of a SQL question that might be more of a case study around supply chain. So let's say that you're a data scientist or data analyst working on a distribution team at Amazon. Write a query to create a report displaying which shipments were delivered to which customers during the membership period. If the transaction is shipped during the membership period, column is member should have the value Y. If not, the column should have the value N. From this problem, you can see that we have two tables. We have a customer's table and we have a shipment's table. So obviously here we have to apply a join and we should be doing it on the customer ID because we want to see which transactions were actually joined between the two. Now the hard part about this question is specifically calculating the is member column. To do so, we can use a case when statement or an if statement. Once we actually conduct the join and we have all of the rows of the customers and the actual shipment dates, then all we have to do is look to see if the ship date is greater than or equal to the beginning date of the membership period, or to see if the ship date is less than or equal to the end date of the membership period. Sorry, it's not an or, it's an and. And both of those functions have to be correct for it to actually to be a yes. All right, the second kind of interview question is around the case study type questions. These questions just give you a general context around a specific business and a scenario and have you solve and kind of work through how you think about the business or, or the question at, at hand. Let's say that you're in charge of an e-commerce D2C business that sells socks online. What business health metrics do you care about tracking on a company dashboard? For these types of questions, we want to use a framework around how we track business health. And that's going to be using input metrics and output metrics. Specifically, input metrics for something like this would be like the landing page of the website and how that converts, the price that we offer for shipping options, and the number of ads that we run on social media websites. Stuff like that kind of then tells us exactly how much traffic is going into the actual website and then understanding the conversion metrics down the funnel. Do they actually care about the conversion metrics a lot or do they care more about the overarching health of the business as a whole, like profitability, revenue? Are they actually a supply chain executive that's looking at the actual amount of time spent that the inventory is on the shelf, uh, potentially how much inventory that we have in general, or maybe even the throughput of how fast we're basically moving a lot of that inventory through the system. So these are all kind of considerations that we have to talk about in this kind of question. You can see our breakdown of the analysis on interview query if you go down to this link and check out the question below. Here's some additional kind of case study questions that are more focused around logistics side of the supply chain management. So for example, let's say that you're working on DoorDash and DoorDash is launching delivery services in New York City and Charlotte and needs a process for selecting dashes. How do we go about deciding which dashes do these deliveries? And would the criteria selection be the same for both cities? So again, something like this, we're talking about applying a framework to both uh, two different cities and walking through the different scenarios here. Would the criteria be the same? Probably not. How would you build a delivery time estimate model? Let's say that you have to do one for consumers ordering food delivery. How would you determine if a new model predicts delivery times better than the old model? 
So this question is much more technical. It's going to be more around machine learning. And so for supply chain analytics, it's going to be probably one of the harder questions you're going to see because it is going to involve a lot more modeling, machine learning, and engineering. Lastly, let's say that every year PG&E has to forecast exactly how much electricity to supply a town. We can't supply too little or else it causes outages, but if we supply too much, it'll waste money if it's not consumed by the town. What's one way we can model out how much electricity to supply? So again, this kind of question is clearly more of a time series modeling type question, right? We know that that's probably the solution that they're looking at. They care about historical patterns for us to actually uh, estimate this value. And they're expecting that you have some knowledge of time series and inventory here to be able to apply this towards this problem case scenario. If you just heard me talk about all these interview questions and you're like, oh my God, Jay, I have no idea how to approach these. The best solution I have for you then is checking out Interview Query. Interview Query is a company that I co-founded that is specifically preparing data science candidates, supply chain analytics candidates, and anyone working in data with their interview process. We have hundreds of different kinds of interview questions as well as hundreds of different kinds of companies on the platform as well that have asked these kinds of questions so that you can prepare for your next interview. Check it out. Uh, you can go to our website and check out our different resource guides, specifically if you're preparing for a supply chain analyst interview at Amazon, let's say Intel, DoorDash, anything that works in supply chain, we'll have that company on our platform for you to prepare for. But don't take just my word for it. Here's a testimonial from one of our customers in which they said that they're really happy to share they ended up getting three offers in January, even one from Google, and they decided to go with DoorDash. Specifically, what they found that helped them out so much was the structure and framework that I brought to their answers, and they can't recommend the platform to their friends. So please check us out at interviewquery.com, sign up, tell all your friends, and be sure to like and subscribe to this video. If you guys have any comments, please let me know. We love hearing your feedback. And I'll see you guys later.